This sermon is brought to you by Change Makers, an international assembly of the Apostolic Church, New Jersey, where we are molding lives to fulfill destinies. We pray the word of God replenishes your soul, launching you into the good works he prepared just for you. Stay tuned. I'm a change maker.
every plan and every thought. He sees, I said, He sees each tears that falls. And He hears me when I cry and when I call unto Him. You want to sing, He knows my name.
that we go through. Whatever the devil tries to teach us, we will always say it is well with our soul. Because we are walking with a great God. We are walking with a good God. If you believe it, say, Lord, you are good. Thank you, Jesus. Under the bones. Just to focus your mind on that. Father, Lord God, we thank you for accepting our worship. We are nobody without you. Father, we believe that through our ministration to you, O oh Lord, everybody who is going through something, oh God, we know that, Father, you've taken care of it. Even as we prepare our hearts, and our body and our mind for your word, oh God. Bless us, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. And let us give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm very happy to be here with you today in fellowship. We give glory and honor to him who has made all things beautiful in his own time to his glory. Hallelujah. I'm here to fellowship, and then also I have a very important announcement to give to you. Hallelujah. There is a wind blowing, right? It's, it's, it's nice and cool. Oh, hallelujah. And it brings good tidings. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for his awesome works in the lives of his own people. And our God has time and seasons for everything. And we thank God greatly. And we thank God for your life also. And every support that so far since the insertion or the beginning of this church, you've accorded our pastor and we do appreciate. My announcement here, most of you have already heard it and have seen it. And I'm here on behalf of the National Council to unveil it officially. We have other uh, plans ahead of us in a few days to come. There is going to be a bigger uh, 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 unveiling, and this is just a first phase of it all. The announcement is that our leader, who is leading this church, has been approved by the National Council, the councils of our apostles and prophets of our church, headquartered in Ghana, has extended a ministerial call to our beloved leader as an associate pastor of the Church of the International. Oh, yes, you can do it better than that. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Sound a big hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Amen and amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Yes. yes. That was great, Sister Winifred. <laughs> that was powerful one. Oh, praise the Lord. So, change makers, on behalf of the National Council, just want to introduce to you your beloved pastor and the first lady. Give them the help. Let's give them. Let's give them. Let's give them. Let's give them. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. God is good. God is good. Sister Linda, God revealed something to me about you. That was last week before this announcement came. I had a dream, and this news had come. And Pastor Nana had called the wife and broke out the news to her. And Sister Hart Nana, and she was going now. She brought tears of joy, and I was like, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I told my wife, something good is coming out. Yeah. 
Amen. So when the announcement came, my wife said, oh, daddy. I said, yes, the Lord is doing great things. Amen. And we thank Amen. God for what Amen. he's doing. Amen. Amen. Our Amen. first lady, also for mommy, Linda, has been there for us yes. in good times and in bad times. Yes. And she is the engine behind yes. our beloved pastor. Mom, we appreciate you. That was the one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So, going <laughs> forward, his name is Pastor. Because you have been in their lives and you have been a good support in their ministry. Amen. We would encourage you to continue to support them. Amen. This is just the beginning. Amen. They have so many years to serve. They have a lot of fields to cover. Yes. And you understand that this place is somebody's place that we are renting. Right. And the support that you will provide them would enable them to take us out. God has ordained and approved it. They are the commanding chief for our church here. We trust in God who has called them to pack them with all the resources that they would need. The strength, the knowledge, the wisdom, spiritual anointing, the grace that they'll be able to lead God's people and take this church to its permanent destination Amen. and we bless Amen. God that you are part of it I pray that the good God who has called all of you as a supporting team will provide for you so that you, you would also be able to provide the church I pray that you lack nothing Amen. that you'll be financially increased Amen. and you'll be blessed supernaturally Amen. that you will not even have room to contain your blessings yes, Lord. this is what I pronounce over your life Amen. somebody if you agree shout a big amen. amen the next announcement is that in a few days to come they would, we would organize a proper and official induction service that one is going to be a real big service Somebody say a big, a big service. Those of you who came to mind saw it. It was a real big service. I like running big programs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of them wanted us to rush to do it. I said, no, 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 no. It's a big service. We have to take our time and plan it and plan it well. Amen. So there's no any rushing. We're going to take our time and plan it and plan it well. Amen. So that we will invite some dignitaries from some places that we know to come and support us and then officially induct them into that office. And then we will also bless them tremendously in any way the Spirit of God will lay in our spirit. So as we are preparing for that day, I want you also to pray into that time. Pray for that time. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor, I want you to stand up together with your better half. First lady, please be on your feet and I pray for you even as you're getting ready to take the podium and minister to us. Today's ministration is very important because it's your first ministration when you were pronounced as a minister. You have become one of us. So now you're going to eat bones. Amen. And the Spirit of God will help you. Amen. Church, I want you to bow down your heads and, and, and support me in spirit even as we are ushering them before the almighty God. Father, Lord, we thank you so much. We appreciate you, Lord, for extending this call to our beloved young brother, Pastor Nana, 
Bidi Akon and our beloved First Lady, Lady Linda Bidi Akon. Lord, among all men, you know those that you have set your eyes upon. That, Lord, you are using them to reconcile the world unto your Father through you, Lord. I pray that you know them from their wombs to God. You netted them together. I can be them into your good hands. You are a faithful God. All those that you call, Lord, you prepare them. Lord, you equip them. You bless them. You anoint them for your work. As they humbly stand here before you. May you, O oh God, equip them in your power, in your authority. That your name, Jesus, will be great in their mouth, in their heart, and in their spirit. That everywhere they stand and proclaim your name. Oh God, there will be divine confirmation, Lord. And signs and wonders will follow. So that your audience would believe that indeed, Lord, you have called them. You are always in the lives of your people. As you rose up from there, you spoke to your disciples. That authority in heaven has been given to you. And they should therefore go into the world and become your disciples and proclaim your name. And Lord, you told them that signs and wonders will follow them. And by your name, they will raise up dead. They will heal. They will cast out demons. And you will be with them to the end of the time. Lord, we pray for our pastor Nana and the first lady. That Lord, be with them according to your word. Provide for all their needs spiritually, materially, supernaturally, oh God. That they will lack nothing, even us. They embark on this great journey. You are a faithful God. We trust that you'll be able to provide all their needs according to your riches in glory. Amen. Lord, provide them and let their joy be full. Amen. That even as they continue in the ministry, God, they will do your ministry work with all happiness, with joy, with understanding. We pray in the name of Jesus, any powers, demons, and principalities that will tempt them. Oh, Lord, that will come on their way to distract and to disturb. We crush them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Crown their head with victory at all times. Enlarge your territory and their ministry. May divine favor fall upon your life. So that at any time you need anything concerning your ministry, God will provide. Jesus, I thank you that you're going to help them to succeed in this ministry. We pray. For beloved friends and sisters here who are supporting them. Bind them together in love and in unity. And let them, oh God, move forward. And take this church from this place temporary that we are renting. Into the permanent place that God, you want to house your church. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's a shifting in the atmosphere. The drought is over. Now is the time of overflow. Our season of great refreshing. The windows of heaven are open. It's time to receive and walk in divine favor, mercy, and grace. Let's advance to take over new territories for the Lord. There will be a new zeal for the work of the Lord. Every area of our lives will experience goodness, love, generosity. We will continue to engage our community and family with the love of God, molding lives and fulfilling destinies in this season. Welcome to Changemakers International Assembly. And now, get ready for the word of God hey. as we welcome God's servants. Nana Bediako. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody be on your feet with me and let's give the Lord a crazy shout. Crazy shout. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has yeah. made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I just know that it needs to be a worship service tonight. It needs to be a worship service tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody bless the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And sing with the voice of triumph. Sing with the voice of triumph. Sing with the voice of triumph. Sing with the voice of fire in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit.
I welcome you all to the new season. Yes. yes. <laughs> Have your seat. <laughs> Yay. Oh, Lord God Almighty. And when God met Moses and Moses said, who am I? He said, I can't even speak. But if you are speaking to me, then show me a sign. And the Lord said, I will show you a sign. Put your hands in your pocket, puts it in there, brings it out. Looks leprosy. He says, now put it back. He said, I will show you a sign. I can imagine Moses getting to Egypt and everybody is pointing at him. Isn't he the murderer? Isn't he the guy who could not speak? Isn't he that guy, that guy? But the Lord picks that guy to bring glory to his name. Let me tell you, those who made it here tonight, it's not your ordinary service. Amen. Amen. I'm always on Austin's case. I'm always on his case. I'm on his case because he doesn't, I don't think he knows what I know about him. I don't think he knows. <laughs> when, when, uh, oh my God is good. The songs that you lifted tonight, they all ministered to me. And I was sitting down there. The Bible says that in the prophet Isaiah went to Hezekiah and then he said, that say it, the Lord says, prepare your home because you are going to die. Do you know what he said? He said, thank you, you are the messenger, but I will go and speak to the person who sent you. <laughs> you will see things later on. We have started the job. Yes. We have started. Amen. He said that that say yet the Lord says you will die. So prepare your home. That say yet the Lord. The Bible says that he turned to the wall and he began to talk to that say yet the Lord. He said you, even if I talk to you, you don't have the results. You don't have the answer because you are just a messenger. Let me talk to the one who sent you. So if somebody tells you that if I don't endorse you, if somebody tells you I, I, I have to give you a reference, if somebody says that I have to recommend you before you can get the job, tell the person I will talk to the one who created you. Because that say yes the Lord when he speaks is final. That's right. That's right. Yes, God bless you. And then and then our brother, uh, did you talk to somebody? Wow. The amount is that has been moved, you people don't know. I was sitting down there and I was crying. You have no idea. But in due time, we will share our testimony. Right now, we will share it. Amen. Yesterday, somebody called me and said, Ah, now I know why you wrote the book. The come after the storm. I said, No, 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 I didn't write the book because of this. But if the title inspires you to buy the book, buy more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My brother, you have no idea the mountains that God has moved. I said, this year is our year of overflow. Amen. 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 There's an African proverb that says that if you see a turtle on a pole, that turtle didn't get there on its own. Somebody placed the turtle over there. Yeah. I remember I was at home one day and I was going through a lot of challenges. And then one evening... Our district pastor calls me and said, I went for a pastor's meeting and uh, I brought up your name to be considered as the U.S. area men's ministry leader. The very week that he called me, it was the week I was thinking about not going to church anymore in New York, and I'm going to look for a different church in New Jersey and attend. And my wife and I were planning. 
And when he called me, I told him, no, 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 no. This assignment, I can't do it. And then he instead, Nana, I want you to go and pray about it. I don't know if he remembers every word. I want you to go and pray about it because I see that out of this office, you'll become a pastor very soon. And then I went and I prayed about it. And the Lord said, take it. I never knew it was going to happen this year. But through his guidance and his tutelage, you know, sometimes we have our own hard times every now and then. But he's been there. He's guided me. He's supported me. He's shown me love. And I'm proud that the first international assembly is an assembly which is within his jurisdiction. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's not a by mistake that we ended up here. And uh, I want you all to join me and thank him for me. Yes. Amen. 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 With a standing ovation, let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Amen. Amen. Somebody said there's an ambulance in the house. Please. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I give all the honor and praise to God. I want to thank God because it is the Lord who had moved those mountains. Amen. And I want you to join me. Um, thank my better half, you know, for supporting me through because... <laughs> Somebody, somebody needs to take that microphone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I also want to say a very big thank you to all the directors. Amen. All the directors. Amen. Let's, let's put our hands together for them. Amen. 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 There's, a, there's a woman here that I admire so much. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of them. I'll just mention two this evening. You know, this woman, from the very first day, you know, there are people who respect the oil on you based on title. Paul was called Paul. James was called James. All the apostles, great apostles, they didn't have any titles, but the oil was there. And from the very first day that I met this woman, the thing she told me is that you are not my elder, you are my pastor. He said, I can never call you elder. And this woman had honored me and respected me. And when I was coming to church this evening, I said, a lot of people are going to have a hard time changing the name. But this woman, she will flow easily. <laughs> Amen. Please, let's celebrate this sweetheart of mine. My essay. Amen. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want anybody, anytime I mention this person's name, I don't want you to be sad at all because I feel his presence all the time. He's in a better place. Let's stop crying. No more crying. And when I received the letter on Friday, I could hear this man saying, he always called me Kwesi. Kwesi. I'm praying for you. And I could feel his presence. You know, I celebrate him for wherever he is this evening. Mr. Chairman, sir. Amen. 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 Alan, you are good. Where was it? <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't rehearse this. Our audiovisual are on point. Amen. Amen. There are certain people that shows you love only in secret. I've come across people. Still, when you are in them in the room, they will tell you they will be with you. They will support you. They will defend you. And when you are outside and when you are in trouble, they will tell everybody they don't know you. But this man took me as his own son. He would defend me. He would fight for me even when I'm not there. 
I traveled all over with him. Everybody thought that, that is my biological father. Because we all have beards, we all skinny. Nobody believed that's not my father. Amen. And I bless God for him so much. And, I, and my, my second book was written about him and dedicated to him. Amen. And I thank God for this day. Yes. And it's, it's, you know, you know you are doing a good job when your own mother will call you and say, even though you are my son, but when I come to church, you are my pastor. You are not my son. Amen. You know, that is a lot. And I want you to join me celebrate Marginette, who has been there from the beginning. Amen. 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 And I want to also use this opportunity to say a very big thank you to those who started at the basement with us. Maybe I can count how many. One, two, three, four, five. Only five people. And, you know, there is, there is one person here, the only male here. He will always say, when we started, you said that some people will not finish with us. And what you said is true. He's the only, one, only man standing. And he has stood by us up to now from the basement to Garfield, Amen. you know, we, 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 we fight all the time, but he's not going anywhere. Amen. You know, there are certain people that you, they, yeah, you can fight, but they will not go anywhere. They are chained. <laughs> Amen. Let's celebrate, you know, Mr. Austin. <laughs> Everybody sent me a text message, but he brought me a card. He said, I didn't want to send a text message. Amen. I'll be, I'll be calling names. But I want to thank all of you for your support. And I want you to understand that we have just started the journey. And we're going to get somewhere. I have seen the place. Sometimes if I tell you, you might be scared. But we are going to a place. Going to a place. The Lord is going to bring speed into our lives. You know, one time I was praying, I was preaching, and I said that I am not called for everyone, and I am not called to lead poor people, and somebody got offended. Instead of buying into the prophecy and seeing that the man of God said he has not been called to lead poor people and declare that I am rich, the person went home and complained. So if I had said I'm called to, to lead poor people, to, will you be happy? The mystery about it is that God is going to bless us. Amen. That the Lord is using me to lead a church where we don't have to do fundraising. We don't do fundraising here. Are you getting what I'm saying? That if we want to buy something, we buy it. If we have a property that the Lord will bless some of us to just get up one day and say, man of God, I got one contract and the bonus is this millions of dollars. We are paying off our mortgage. What is so difficult to say this is to be? Amen. I like the way Winifred was laughing and clapping her hands. Because as an accountant, she understands what I'm talking about. Because one of these days, only one contract. <laughs> only one contract. Amen. Amen. And then I want to I wanna always, I want to thank God for our musicians. Amen. Amen, amen. So, a lot of my time is fast paint, but there's a message that God wants me to share. We will continue what we did last week, and I want you to get ready. Amen. Bow down your head for a short word of prayer. The entrance of your word, bring light and give us understanding to the simple. I pray that as your word is coming, O oh God, fill me with fresh oil. I pray that lives will be changed, that you will lift us up to the next level. Open the eyes of our understanding. Speak to us this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please give me your undivided attention. I believe I have about 25 minutes or so. But whatever the Lord wants to give to us, he will give to us. Amen. 
There are three things that I spoke about on the first night that in the season, in the year of overflow, these three ingredients is what the Lord wants us to pay attention to. I took it even though I was the bearer, I was the messenger, but as a messenger, I took the word seriously. And I said, if I was working harder in the year 2020, the year 2021, I want to work harder. Hallelujah. I have come to understand the word obedience in a special way. That the word obedience doesn't mean that I agree with what you are saying. Obedience doesn't mean that what you are telling me makes sense. Obedience means that as much as there is no scientific proof, as much as there is no study supporting what you are saying, as much as what you are saying does not make sense, but I'm willing to obey. Hallelujah. I have shared this before and I said in the year 2020, uh, 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 the year 2019, the Lord laid upon my heart and he said that in the year 2020, I want you to let go of all your other jobs, keep only one and concentrate on ministry. And that year, the year that I let go, I had one full-time job, two part-time jobs. The year that I let go of those two jobs, the one full time that I, 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 I was going to keep, January, February, March, COVID hit, all our surgeries for the year was canceled, and then we had to stay home. That is when you ask yourself that the voice that I heard was it from God. And every now and then, the enemy will whisper into my ears and said, are you sure you heard from God? I said, and then I'll go, I will go to God. And then I said, God, you told me to do this. Don't put me to shame. And I want to tell you that in the year of 2020, I saw the Lord in a different way. Ask my wife. We have not begged for anything. We have been able to pay our mortgage throughout that year, throughout that season. And the Lord did not put us to shame. The power of obedience. And then one day I was just, I had this guy who mows my lawn. So 2020, he comes around in the beginning of the year and he said, ah, I came the other day and you, have, you, you did it yourself. Why? You don't want me to do it? I said, I'm home. I'm not working. And I have the machine. So I will do it myself. Hey, I have time. The whole week I'm home. Sometimes I work only once a week. Why should I pay for somebody to move my lawn when I can do it myself? The week after, the guy comes and says, listen, anytime we come here to mow your lawn, me and my workers, we always talk about you. That you are different. There's something unique about you. And I just bumped into some of your messages on YouTube. I didn't know you were a pastor. The whole year, I will mow your lawn for you for free. This is America. Then every now and then, I wanted to find out, is it really true? So sometimes he will not show up and then I will do it. Then he will come and knock my door. He said, man of God, I told you I will do it. Why are you doing it? I promise you, the person is not from Africa. This person is Hispanic. And then I began to understand. And he said, if you obey me, if only you will obey my voice, I will keep you. We went through the year 2020, and in that year, 2020, when COVID hit, I saw the Lord. I built an intimate relationship with God, and the Lord said, in the beginning of the year, I will show you mercy. I will show you favor, and the things that you least expect, the Lord will begin to open doors for you, that you will see the hand and the finger of God. It is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich. And it adds no sorrow. Last week we were talking about giving. And we touched on a lot of things. I will just run through it. But I want to touch on certain biblical principles. And whenever men of God began to talk about giving, they said that, oh, the man is broke. Or the church is broke. No, 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 no. Seriously speaking. We will not be broke to the extent to beg. No, no, no. The, let me tell you, the God that I serve and the God that I wrestle with, you guys don't know the prayers I pray. I said, ah, I am the one that will go before God and tell God, listen, listen, God, you and I. You know that I, I, I brag about you, right? 
So you know that if people began to laugh at me, they are not laughing at me, but they are laughing at you. But I always want an opportunity to give you the glory. So please show up. And the Lord will show up. So last week, one of the questions that I asked was that why believers don't give? Why Christians don't give? And we came to certain uh, conclusion that people don't give because one, they lack information. They lack teachings. We came to an understanding that because some people don't trust how the finances of the church are taken care of. And let me tell you, I am the first person to say that I understand why certain people don't give. Because some of the pastors have tarnished the reputation of the office. There are pastors that have squandered church funds. And because of that reason. But let me tell you, if there are bad doctors, bad nurses, bad cops, understand that in that same season, God has raised certain people in this end time to build back the reputation of the office. There are times that you feel shy to even tell people that you are a pastor. Because as soon as you, are, you say you are a pastor, there is a type of stigma upon you. But we will change the reputation. Yeah. We will change the reputation. I thank God that on my school platform, they will talk about their nonsense. But somebody will say that, hey, don't forget, we have Pastor Danavi on the platform here. And if you know certain bad ones, as for us, we know that this one is good. Yeah. Hallelujah. So some of the things that we learned is that don't get information on social media. Anything that brings you blessing, understand that the enemy will try to prevent you from receiving those blessings. And, and if, you, if you don't hear anything tonight, I want you to understand that there is the principle of, of seed time and harvest. Whether you are a believer or not, that principle works. That is why an unbeliever will take money, give it to people in need, and they receive. And they said that, oh, the stars and the universe will bring me more if I give. They are talking about universe. But they forget that the universe that they think will bring them money was created by the man of God that you and I have received. The Bible says that for without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when you are giving and you lack understanding, you lack revelation. If you are giving and you don't understand why you are giving, you will not receive the blessings. Because where the Lord is taking me and this church, we have to understand this fundamental principle of seed time and harvest. And I can say in authority that the year 2020, my wife and I give more to the church than the years before. And it was the year of farming. Because you know what? I understand that when I sow more, I will receive more. And, and I can say, you know, the confidence that I have here is that I was sharing last week. We have structures in this place. Anybody here that wants to look at our books, you have, you have liberty to look at our books. Because we are not taking money and misusing it. The money is there for a reason. Last week, I shared about us acquiring our own property. Imagine that we have acquired our own property. There's, there's a place where after school program, where our kids can come to. There's a place where those who want to work out can work out. We have a gym. We have a health center. There are certain amenities that will help benefit us. My vision is that before every child of this house gets to college, there's a special fund that we will give to the child to go to college. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand that some of us, some of us, if, if people have disappointed you, we didn't come for money. We came before because we want to mold life to fulfill destiny. There is a mandate upon us. If it was money, we wouldn't be here. If it was money, we wouldn't be here. But we realize that God has called us for a purpose and has given an assignment upon us. Hallelujah. Amen. You realize that in this church, we don't take dues. Has anybody asked you for dues? Ladies ministry dues, men's ministry dues, welfare dues. I've been in churches, they have like 10 dues. So you are paying tight and you are paying all these dues in addition. We have, we have, we have, we budget every year. Funds that goes to ladies ministry, funds that goes to men's ministry, funds that goes to children's ministry, funds that goes to the welfare ministry. So if some, if we have to visit someone, we don't go and ask the welfare chairperson because we don't have a welfare chairperson. 
Why are we able to do that? And why am I encouraging you to do that? When you are faithful in your tithe and your offering, we don't need to pay any dues because the church has money. And when we have to do things, we do it. Hallelujah. Uh, let me tell you, a time will come where we can even take a, a, a prayer cruise, a corpus cruise, and the church will pay for it. But it will take you and I begin to build and to sow those seeds today. Hallelujah. Maybe you are sitting here and you are saying, ah, maybe he is, is. You want to go on the cruise? Yeah, why not? You see, I was trying to keep it a secret. Now he announced it himself. You know, very soon he will not be coming to church alone. There's a picture that is on my phone. If I show you the picture, some of you will have nightmares tonight, so I won't show it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. If I give it to you, hurry up. Who has it? All right, I'll read it. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. The other interpretation says that it is the blessing of the Lord that maketh man rich and adds no sorrow. Now, I want you to pay attention for the next few seconds. There is an ancient Hebrew definition of the word blessing. The blessing is not the cars, the houses, the money, all those things. But it is a byproduct of the blessing. Please get this. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, that makes you wealthy and adds no sorrow. It is the blessing of the Lord. The ancient uh, uh, Hebrew definition of blessing says that anointed to win. Anointed to win. When the blessing of God comes upon you, you can lose. You cannot lose. And people will wonder, when did you get here? Why are you winning? It is the blessing of the Lord that makes man rich. Now, number two, it empowers you to overcome. When the blessing of the Lord comes upon you, it empowers you to overcome. Three, impossible to be cursed. One blessing of the Lord. That is why when God told Abraham to leave, there is something that Abraham did. The blessing that God promised Abraham had a condition. The condition is obedience. And I says that obedience does not have to make sense. Imagine Abraham leaving his family members and he's going to a place and they ask him, where are you going? He said, I don't even know where I'm going. But, 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 but there's a man who just told me to move and I'm going. Uh, uh, impossible to be cursed. Do you remember the story of Balaam? The Bible said, Barak told him that I want you to go and curse God's people. And for multiple times, whenever he decided to curse them, he began to bless them. When I was studying the word, the Lord whispered into my ears and he said, do you know why they can't curse you? Because whenever they try, it turns into blessing. Some of you don't know the, the, the things that we have seen, the things that people are working behind the scenes. But the more they try, they get disappointed. The more they try, they get disappointed. Because of the blessing of the Lord that is upon us and is upon the house. How do you benefit from these blessings? Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. I just spoke about it. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Praise Obedience gives birth to the blessing. The blessing gives birth to successful results. Mom, you can, you can read. Please go ahead. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in, and in thee shall all families of the earth 
be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. So God was talking about the blessing. The blessing, the results from the blessings are the things that you see. And you said people are blessed. But it comes from the act of obedience. It was when Abraham obeyed God, that is when the blessing was fulfilled. And the byproduct of the blessings were the flocks and the financial breakthroughs that will come our way. But it comes from you being obedient unto God. The Bible says that give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosoms. Last week I was sharing a lot of testimonies. When we were about to move to New Jersey, you know, I had just graduated from college and my lease in the bronze was about to change. And over there they will look at your annual income. And I'm looking at the one bedroom place that I'm living. And if they have to look at my annual income for that year, they will increase the rent. And I said, God, I need to get out of this place. So we came to Jersey and we were shopping around. And then, you know, we went through a lot of places and we got to this place. And I told the real estate agent, I said, in the future, when I get ready, this is the house that I want. I want something like this, where we are now. I was speaking because that time there was nothing in the account. We had nothing. I had just graduated, started working. I went home, I was praying, and the Lord laid upon my heart. And he said, pick five seeds. I didn't even share this with my wife. It was later after I had done it when I shared it with her. And sow that seed into big ministries. I remember one of them was sent to TDJ's ministry for four dollars. Some of these big, big ministries. And I'm asking myself, by God, these big ministries, what are they going to do with my little money? And the Lord said, be faithful and be obedient. That week, I took it. Some of them I called on the phone. I said, hey, I just want to sow a seed. I gave them the information. By the end of the week, I was there when the realtor agent came and said, listen, I've, I, I've, I've been, I know you are not ready, but look at these numbers. The owner wants to sell it for this price, which is a good deal. The bank are ready to give you this, give you for closing, do this, and this. this. And the guy, the guy was just putting everything on paper in one week. And I remember we were scared. I remember when we went for closing, I was signing the document, and my hands were shaking. I was literally scared because I, 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 I was working. I hadn't even finished my probation. And I told my wife, ah, this thing, it looks too good to be true. Maybe there might be some, something, some, there's something wrong somewhere. And then the Lord said, you've forgotten that when you guys were about to buy your church in the bronze, you took a seed and you sowed the seed into the, the church and you told God that God, the same way you assisted us to buy this property, give me that same favor that I will get my own house. I was speaking things and obeying to God when I didn't know what I was talking about. Little did I know that the Lord was about to open doors and give me favor. I am talking about obedience. One of our sisters was sharing with me the other day, last week, and he said, man of God, do you know that ever since I became faithful with my tithe, there's an inner peace, and I haven't struggled financially. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, one of the most difficult things to do is to pay tithe. I'm not going to stand here and sugarcoat it. Hey, the woman is raising her hands. Please change it from tonight. I, I'm telling you. God bless you. You know, I love this woman, but she goes to live in all the time. You need to get a, 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 a day job. You haven't gone to work yet? My sister, I am saying this on authority today. Because of your faithfulness, you said you brought your tithe. May the Lord look at that seed, that tithe, and show you favor and mercy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you something. You're going to go to the social media right now, tonight, and just Google tight. And I guarantee you, you will come across a lot of speakers on social media convincing people why tight is bad. I want you to also go to Amazon and pick up any people, any Jewish person. Or if you see a Jewish person on the street, just walk to them and ask that person, tell me about tight. The Jewish people don't play with tithe. Hey, they can go to the club and drink and party and, and hang out, but they are faithful with their tithe. Why? One small nation houses 
about 70% of the world's billionaires, one nation. Check it. So when you see that somebody is progressing in life, for me, I will find out what is their secret. The Bible says that the Lord, the Lord said, concerning Titan, put me to test. That is the only one. And the people, people will just get up and say that, oh, it is Old Testament. If it's Old Testament, they were worshipping in the Old Testament. What are you worshipping now? Why are you in the temple of God? Then it's the Old Testament. Let's leave it in the Old Testament. But I want you to understand that there are certain biblical principles that when you do it, you can go to God and say, God, according to your word. <laughs> Some of us, we walk by faith. Oh. <laughs> my wife will tell you, my husband, <laughs> if, you, if you follow him, something will happen to you. I will wake up and say, listen, we will never be put to shame. I was sharing here, I was talking about a, a, a man of God who was supposed to um, ensure the Titanic ship. And this man was a believer. And the, I, I, I believe it was the very day for him to sign the insurance for that ship. The Spirit of God told him, don't sign it. And he didn't sign it. Otherwise, he would have lost millions of dollars when the, when the, when the ship sunk. Look at everybody who is a tighter. I was, I was, I remember, you know, last year somewhere, the King Jimmy sent me a video, and it was a preacher man from Nigeria preaching, and the man said, "My brothers and my sisters, you can listen to the TV, to the internet, and whatever it is, and decide that I won't pay tight. That is fine, but let me tell you, whether you like it or not, you will pay. <laughs> Wait, let me finish the statement. You will pay." But it depends on whether you pay to God or you pay to the devil. He says, at all costs, you pay. And when I began to talk about the blessing of the Lord, the fact that you are not in the emergency room every weekend is the blessing of the Lord. Let me tell you, I work in healthcare, and there are certain mothers whose children, they have more than one child who is sickle cell. And every, almost every other week, the mother is in the emergency room with their kids. And you don't have to go through that experience. It is the blessing of the Lord. I work when I was in school and I was doing clinical rotation. I worked to this specialty uh, uh, pediatric hospital in Badhala in New York City. That was the first time I saw an infant who did not have mouth. The mouth did not develop and they had to cut a small hole. I have seen kids on, on tubes all over. Kids who had had a whole bunch of stuff. And then I would come home every evening. And I'll look at my children and I said, this is the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the Lord says that when it comes to Titan alone, I, the Lord, I will keep the devourer away from you. And then people say that, oh, but Jesus didn't preach about Titan in the New Testament. In Matthew 23, 23, he spoke about it briefly. You know why Jesus didn't care about, about Titan? Because the people were good at paying tight, but they were not good at loving each other. They were not good at doing other things. So there was no need for him to keep on concentrating on tightening when he came that you will have life and have it abundantly. As a matter of fact, your salvation and you going to heaven is more important to me about the tightening. But I still have to teach you for you to understand that there are things prayers do. But when it comes to increase, overflow, when it comes to abundance... It is not prayer. <laughs> it is principle. It is principle. Hallelujah. And if you don't have any confidence, if you don't have any confidence, as for this place, you can have confidence. Amen. Amen. You can have confidence. Because here, we don't finish church, and then the, the pastor puts the money in his bag, and they go and put it in his trunk, and take it home. And then he and his wife will go and count it. And then the wife will go out with a credit card and shop the whole week. We don't do that here. My district pastor knows every income that comes in. He checks online. So there is check and balance in this house. And my, my joy at the end of my service here, it's not about how much buildings I have. It's not about how much cars I will have. But it's how much life I impacted. Do you know what brings me joy is when a member can call you and say that a year ago, my spiritual life was not like this. And today, I can look at my life and say, I am better off. 
I never knew that I have this potential in me. By joining this church, you have stirred up the giftings in me. That is valuable than you giving me a million dollars. Absolutely. Hallelujah. So we are on a journey. Amen. I will continue another time. But I wanted to talk about tight first fruits, um, alms, and seed, which is still offering. Because we have to understand. And each one of them has its own benefit that it gives to us. Amen. So I'll begin the prayer to give us the closing prayer. And then our Father will give us the benediction. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for tonight. We thank you so much for what a successful day that you have given unto us. That Lord, we thank you that Heavenly Father, your word really says that no one comes to your presence and leave the same. As we have come to learn about the principle of giving, we are praying that, that Lord, let us understand the, the principle of seed time and harvest time so that our blessings, we will be able to receive whatever blessings that, that is due us. We commit this week into your hands and we pray that we ask in for your divine protection, uh, that, that Lord, you will be with us and you preserve us and bring us back here next week with testimonies. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and adoration and all the saints shall say amen. amen. We are heirs of the Father. We are jointed with the Son. We are children. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. And walking in the fear of the Lord. And in, in the, the comfort, comfort of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit they, they were multiplied. multiplied. Amen. Amen. Shall we please receive the benediction? May the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord bless you and increase you in all areas of your life. May the Lord bless you and enlarge your territory. May the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you in all your endeavors. Bless you and keep you and give you his perfect peace. Amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless you. Sing with me, choir. Hey there, we trust you were truly blessed by the sermon. We would love to see you at one of our services soon. Check out our website at www.changemakersnj.org for all of our contact information, meeting times, and ways you can give to support the ministry. God bless you. Sing with me now, look at me.